You outline a vision of the world, I guess it was in 2080, of what it would look like without insects. I shouldn't say without insects, without the sort of the, the insects that we value. Um, wh walk us through that a little bit, and, and let's just talk about, you know, what would be around when it comes to insects? Yeah. Uh, so I tried to imagine um, putting myself in the shoes of my, so my eldest son is 20 now born on the millennium, just about, just about. And I was imagining what he will encounter in his life, what it will be like. So I, I put myself in his shoes, aged 80, looking back at most of the 21st century. And I tried to imagine what's likely to happen in the next 60 years. And, and actually, unless we address, address these big environmental issues like the disappearance of insects, life's going to be pretty tough, I think. Um, and uh, so in terms of insects and, and we should say let me just stop you here too for one second i mean we're, we're talking d even distinct of climate change in, at this point i mean obviously there the uh the climate uh, climate change is going to uh, really impact the um the the insect population but we're talking about if the, even if there were no climate change uh, per se, and, and, and 60 years out, you know, uh, climate could also be, uh, uh, the change could be devastating. But we're just talking about the question of insects at this moment. Yeah, sure. Although, I mean, they are, these things are all intertwined. You know, one of the big drivers of insect declines is beginning to be climate change. And there are many other major environmental issues that all of which kind of interlock. And I think the solutions and uh, uh, to most of them are, are common. But anyway, in terms of uh, the insects themselves. There's a kind of irony that the ones we like, the pretty butterflies, the bumblebees that pollinate our, our apples and so on, seem to be the ones that are declining. Whereas the kind of tough, adaptable, pest-like insects, the house flies, the cockroaches, the mosquitoes, are actually, they're pretty adaptable and they exist in huge populations. So they can, they can cope with most of the things we've thrown at them so far. So they'll still be with us and will probably long outlast us. Um, but the insects we really can't do without and that we'll be very sad to see go are the ones that are disappearing. And what, I mean, why, what, is it just that we don't like insects that are that uh, adaptable because or they're, they're coming I mean why is it why is that well partly it's just chance you know house flies for example um, they benefit from all the all the, the rotting organic waste that we produce so the, the arrival of humans on the planet has, has led to house flies being much more common than they ever would have been and because there are countless billions of them. If you spray them with pesticides, a few of them are resistant and they quickly evolve resistance as a population. So um, they're quite hard to, to, to control and they, they will thrive so long as we produce refuse, which seems to be likely to continue into the future for quite some time. Um, so they're just a few lucky insects that basically uh, thrive around human habitation. Uh, and those are the ones that, that will certainly not be disappearing anytime soon. Whereas things like bees, which are rather slow breeding creatures, they're much more sensitive uh, uh, to the environment and the, to the way it's changing. They're the ones, sadly, that are disappearing. All right, well, just to go back to uh, your son in the year 2080, like what's his uh, uh, life looking like without uh, the insects? Well, I'm imagining him, uh, it, it's the, that chapter starts with him sitting in the garden in the middle of the night, defending the vegetable patch um, and that uh, and the fruit that he would have had to hand pollinate because without pollinators, um, the, the only solution if you want to grow crops will be to pollinate, pollinate them ourselves. And there are already sadly parts of the world where this is happening famously in parts of southwest china they now hand pollinate their apple and pear orchards um so i he's living in a world where where life is tough it's difficult to get enough food people are very likely going to starve um if we don't address these insect decline issues um and where you have to you know defend the food you have against people that would otherwise come and steal. It's all very apocalyptic, uh, but, uh, and it's, it sounds a bit, um, I, I mean, it's, I, I know some people will think it's, it's ridiculous to imagine that, that civilization might crumble, but 
unless we address this whole raft of interrelated environmental issues, including the demise of insects, then I, I think there is every likelihood that life for our children is going to be really hard. And, you know, we, we would do anything for our children, wouldn't we, apart from apparently leave them a, a healthy planet. Can you give us a sense of how rapidly the insect population has declined over the past few decades? Because it seems precipitous and something that needs to be noted. Uh, I was staggered to, to see how quickly things are shifting. One of the most dramatic pieces of evidence was is a study from Germany, which found a, a 76% drop in 26 years. Um, uh, that's probably at the top end. Um, there have been a lot of other studies scattered around the world. Um, for example, in the UK, we know that butterfly populations have roughly halved since 1976 when I was a kid. Um, so that, that's, that's I, stunning. I mean, that's well, I, I, it's I mean, that's stunning. The idea that you're you, you know, let's let's just say that there's some flexibility between 50 percent and three quarters of the insect population has has diminished over the course of the past 30 or 40 or 50 years it's just it's just is nuts it's pretty scary isn't it i mean this has happened you know in our lifetimes on our on our watch um I, just to give you a north american example uh, the monarch butterfly um has decreased in eastern north america by about 80 percent since 1990 so you know actually pretty recent times um the Californian population of the monarch is down 99.9% in 20 years. Uh, so, yeah, the, it's, this is dramatic. And if it continues, then, you know, that, that it really will be catastrophic for life on Earth. Before we get into the sort of w w what's causing this, um, the... Uh uh, you talk about in the in the book about why we don't really notice this and um you, you brought up the like uh, uh the the bugs on the windshield and i you know uh, i i remember it it, it it just suddenly dawned on me like yeah i, I did there, there's a lot less of 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 bugs on my car in the summer than when I was you know the thirty years ago when I was uh, uh, you know uh, driving. Will you talk about that dynamic as to why we're not in tune to it? Well, I guess the reality is that most of us don't spend much time kind of interacting with insects. Don't pay much attention to them. You know, we we many of us live in cities. For most people, insects just not on their radar at all. And it is interesting that almost the only thing that most people have noticed is this, the clean windshields. Although even there, most people haven't actually thought about it. And it's only when you point it out to them, they just like you two, they say, oh, yeah, you're right. I can remember that. But because it's been a kind of gradual thing, there was no, it didn't happen suddenly. It happened, you know, the, just a few bees left, a few butterflies left each, less rather, each year. Then, then it's crept up on us. And um, I think most people are, are blithely unaware of this entire crisis. I mean, even the butterfly example. I, I used to remember as a kid trying to find butterflies or seeing them more regularly. And I, I, I thought it was maybe just my childlike innocence escaping me, but I, I, don't, I can't remember the last time I've, I've seen one, honestly. But that, what really worries me, I guess, um, aside from the kind of practical difficulties that will arise if, if we lose most of our insects, is just this, you know, I, for me, in, things like butterflies are a kind of gorgeous creatures. And the thought that maybe my grandchildren might grow up in a world where they never get to see them, um, I find really sad. Um, and I, I think that's really, that kind of thing is what motivates me more than anything else. 